Hi, thank you for tuning in. This podcast is about project management. So if you are inclined towards becoming a project manager or someone who's just joined the project management team, this podcast is extremely relevant to you. Uh, with me, I have Harshad, who is our cloud and network head. I have Jatin, who is our digital transformation head. Bhumi, who is one of our account managers. And Pratik, who is one of our lead project managers. At Shebang, we're a technology-focused company. And we build websites, applications, and implement custom uh, softwares to stand in the backbone of their ecosystem. Um, and while doing all of this, project management is an integral part of this entire process. Um, so my first question to you guys is the fundamental, what is project management and how important is project management in this entire process? Sure. So, so project management is basically the entire process of I would say seeing the project through from start to finish, so right from inception till taking it live. And uh, as a project manager, you basically need to be involved in every step of the way, uh, right from when you get the brief, when you get the scope closed, to when you're designing and when you're in the development phase and then sort of going live. So it's the entire process of taking care of the day-to-day -day activities, communicating with the client, communicating with your internal teams as well and uh, you know making sure you're on top of things every single day got it and what are the different teams that a project manager usually sorry harsha you have something to oh, add so on to this i, I want to add that okay you know that that's like a standard definition of a project manager but i would say that it's one person who's good on management good on communication skills and he's not afraid to wear a different hats because again Absolutely. at shabang we don't follow a typical uh, project management system which is which uh, MNCs or the IT firms follow. So it's more like, okay, you are there in the system, you are working on a project or something, and okay, you, you have to be flexible to wear different hats at different stages in the project. That's very important what you say, because what, what we typically see as a project manager at Shebang is you're involved in the design process. That means you're closely working with yeah. the designers on building that site map. You're closely working with them on taking certain design decisions. Right. or working with them and helping them also take those certain design decisions. You're working with the developers in identifying, let's say, the best kind of animation that should be used or the kind of page transition that should be using. And then you're also sort of also working with the QA guys on checking checking right. the content and so on and so forth. So that's, it's uh, like you rightly said, a project manager at Shebang is sort of wearing multiple hats uh, through the process of, uh, through this entire process of building out these applications okay. for, for our clients. Um, typically, who all does a project manager usually interact with during the course of this entire project? Whether it's internal, external, what are the different people that they usually interact with? So generally what happens is that the entire process where project manager comes in actually starts before the you know, project initiates. It actually starts when you know, we are, we are trying to close in a client, right? So the BDT, we, are, we also interact with BD team. Right, and we also start, you know, building those pitches, building those presentation, building those decks, right, and uh, customizing it as per the client requirement and giving them customized solutions. So that's where a project manager and the technical team both coordinate and you know build up that entire process into place. That's and after that, uh, you know, as you guys mentioned, like the technical team is some is with whom you know a project manager interacts a lot. Uh, because at the start, so if when you're giving a tech stack, so the project manager has to confirm, you know, what sort if that sort of technology is actually going to work for the client or not, right? Or if we are updated because the technology is evolving continuously. So what we want to make sure at Shebang is that we are we are providing the sort of applications uh, which are you know latest in technology and are more secure. So that so they start this these discussions with the technology team. Shebang is also known for its creativity. Right, and the creativity of any web application or uh, a software uh, gets reflected through the UI and UX. So the UI UX is also something which is very crucial, where the tech, where the project manager has to uh, coordinate with the designers. And also, so from my experience, what happens is so whenever you know Pratik is sort of uh, working uh, on a project, right? So it's not just the designer who is giving the input. Pratik also does a lot of research, yeah. right? Or any other project manager. So they do a lot of research. They would come up with a certain competitor analysis and uh, basis which they're going to be defining the UI UX. And uh, once the development has been done, then there is quality assurance team, right? 
and af after that again one of the most important stakeholder is the client so they keep on interacting with the client making sure there is a good relationship right making sure the client is always happy customer is always right is something we make sure we maintain that right and uh, yeah so these are the stakeholder different stakeholders uh, with whom we interact uh, Pratik you want to add on to that so sure, just to I think you covered most of it and just to add on we also end up interacting with the content team the SEO, SEO teams as well uh, wherever the clients requirements do require that right if we're working, working on the website content too and if at all let's say there's a photo shoot also maybe a product photo shoot and those product photos need to go onto the website we even end up interacting with the photography team so it's a lot of teams that we do end up interacting with and to close the loop with what Harsha had said wear different hats right so at some point you may be, may be giving an input related to content at some point it may be design related so you're doing a lot of different things throughout the project. Got it. That's a good, good point that you bring up that we also bring in sort of the content team and the SEO team. Yeah. Because your typical project management teams usually are working only with UI UX designers right. and developers. But right. here at Shebang, because we have uh, an in-house SEO team, we have an in-house content team, these teams also come in into the project and we're sort of building out if, if that's a web application, we're building it out, which is SEO compatible, which is also keeping all the SEO aspects in mind, we're building all that out right from the get-go. Um, if I know this is sort of a lengthy question, uh, but if for someone who's joining us or someone who's wanting to join us or someone who's just joined us, could you all talk me through a little bit about the process of project management? So what is a typical process that goes into planning out an entire project? Uh, and ensuring that you know that we're setting ourselves up for success and and for a timely delivery of a project. Sure. So, so when, as Jatin said, when the project starts is really when we get the brief in, we interact with the BD team, and that that stage is really crucial because you need to understand what the brief is and you need to break it down. So whether I need someone from the content team or we need someone who's from a design perspective to give an input, we get everyone involved at the get go. And usually it's the same team who's involved at that stage as well who ends up working on the project. Could you, which is the team that, which is involved at the get-go? So during this induction call that you have with the client, yeah. which is the first call that you have, briefing call the client, which are the various teams that are actually involved during this process? Sure, so it's, it's, a, it's the design team, the UI UX team, it's the content team, the SEO team, and the development team as well, if required at that early stage. But broadly, it's these teams because okay. these teams come together to make the project at the end of the day. Okay, go on. What happens after this? And after these teams get just, involved? Just to add to what Pratik is saying, this, these teams or these people, individuals come together before the project is closed. So, for example, when uh, the BD team has an inclination that, okay, we have a strong foothold in the client, with the client, and we have an in, uh, let's build them a deck. That's when a project manager comes on board and like understands the brief tries to break it down with these individual people to you know give something concrete to the client saying that okay this is how we are going to do your project or do this uh, whatever your requirement is and then only like you know once it starts finalizing or when the scope of work and everything is closed that's when they even flesh it out even further so that the internal stakeholders who are actually executing things on this project will uh, uh, get more clarity on or start have that clarity to just start and work. Got it. So when these teams come together for the induction call, what is usually the next steps? Uh, what what happens from there on? Sure. So after the induction call and the scope being closed, the, what we start doing is we start collating all the assets and the content we need. So it can be raw content, which is maybe something about the company, it can be assets like product, product photos and so on and so forth, right? And once we sort of collated all this together, you get a sense of what different stages you're looking at in the project and how you need to plan out the different phases. So broadly, it's the uh, wireframing, the designing, and then the development phase, and then the QA and go live. These are the different phases that it's sort of broken down into. And what we do is we create a Gantt chart which defines the planning and the asset collation and the induction of the brand, which you then move on to the wireframe stage, sorry, the sitemap stage wherein you're working on the sitemap and the pages that are required for this particular project. We then build out an information architecture with the design content and the project content team and the project manager working very closely together. So you know what pages are there, what content is going on, what pages. And then basis the information architecture, we move on to the wireframes as well, wherein you're basically laying out a bare structure saying that, 
these are the different sections on the page and this is what it might look like right and as in when you get those things approved you move on to the next phases and all of these phases are sort of mapped out to the T in our Gantt chart so the Gantt chart will specify that okay we're working on X wireframe for these number of days we're then getting in the client feedback and while we're getting in the client feedback we're also working on the next wireframe so we're not we're really not wasting any time we're spending every day to sort of its fullest and taking it from there and sort of once you're done with the wireframes you move on to your designs is and then that stage is where they're really brought to life and uh, you have your colors you have your product photos coming in you have your content going on to the design so there's a lot going on and once the designs are approved we move into development and uh, of, of course depending on whatever the client stakeholders are there we communicate with them as well in case there's any dependencies on their side at that stage uh, once you're developed we move on to the QC stage where you check the website you check the application make sure things are functioning correctly make sure the user experience that we had in mind is actually coming out to the end user and we do a thorough testing of whatever we've built out and yeah from there on it's sort of looking to go live sharing the link with the client getting their feedback in incorporating that and just adding the final touches that Got we it. need. So what I hear you say is that the discovery and planning stage is the most important stage which is where you actually have all your teams coming together. Uh, in your discovery stage you actually have these teams asking the right questions to the clients and understanding a bit better about their business Yeah. Uh, and then sort of disseminating the work and getting the designers to do their do their stuff. So that discovery and planning that, stage is important yeah. while building building out the that is chart. That is the most crucial stage uh, and uh, that is the one of the most integral part of the entire project management wherein we do these discovery calls to understand the entire business model uh, of the company. So when we are sort of building a website for the client, we just do not rely on certain brand guidelines which have been shared by the client, right? It's what also important try, to understand why they're building that website and what they want like, to what achieve is this, What is something that they want to communicate, Correct. right? And basis that, because of that, because we understand that, right? So essentially at Shabang, one of the things that we are trying to do is we are trying to marry business and the technology, right? So understanding their business model becomes very crucial. And once we have had these discovery calls, right? So what we also try to do is try to build a blueprint for the, uh, for the client. Once they have that blueprint, they also understand that these are the processes, right. right? And then we move on to, as Pratik mentioned, that we move on to building a Gantt chart and it goes on from there. Got it. Got it. So speaking about this, you know, I, and I've spoken, Jatin and Harshad, we've spoken about this at length multiple yeah. times. Uh, we don't have, a lot of times there are these methodologies of project management or of building a project uh, that companies follow. And we've always sort of come to terms that we have a sort of hybrid approach to a mix of both those. You all want to talk, you all want to talk about that approach that we follow uh, and why we follow that with, with most of our clients and when do, we, and, and yeah, if you want to just talk a little bit about that. Right. So uh, this approach that, uh, you know, we sort of have or this mindset of how to uh, approach a project uh, comes from the fact that, okay, no client, uh, no two clients are the same. and for each client, Shabang needs to give a tailor-made uh, solution or a workflow of uh, whether it's not just related to tech, but all the other departments and all the other work that we do. So it's a uh, tailor-made services that we uh, offer our clients, basis their requirements. And from that's from there, uh, we have sort of uh, had this hybrid workflow, which is like a part partly waterfall model, but also uh, partly agile, where it's uh, a continuous uh, cycle of development design integration testing etc so uh, uh, when i say waterfall is where uh, we basically have a limit saying that okay after this point uh, we cannot accept more changes because uh, uh, there'll be a major shift in timelines or the deliverables so uh, generally this stage is uh, the design stage where we say that okay we cannot take more changes but uh, when your project is uh, in the development phase, there are certain changes that we can tweak. Like, uh, if I take a very simple example, a client says that, you know, uh, I want to change the header section of a page. Okay, that is a small change that I may be able to incorporate in my design phase before that page is developed or even after that page is developed, I can still take it. But um, if uh, the requirement is such that, okay, I need an additional page or some, a new requirement that comes in, then that is something that we try to minimize and, you know, keep it limited to the design phase. That, okay, you close it at the design phase, 
because we can't take such requirements later. So essentially, it boils down to what type of customer it is. Right. right. There would be sort of and customers. And what kind of timeline it is. Yeah. What, so that, that was my next point. So there are certain in customers when we are operating in India that they have very short timelines. So whenever they are, they will Pratik has this experience. Whenever they will come on BD team and they would ask, uh, you know, by when you see the project is getting completed, they would say yesterday. Yesterday. Right. So right. this happens on each and every BD call when you are interacting with Indian clients. So to do that and to manage that, right. Uh, this is something that we, so that's why we come up, came up with, the, you know, uh, the hybrid model where Agile and Waterfall comes together. So everything which, uh, you know, Pratik was mentioning from the research phase to going to analysis, right, doing the development, doing the quality assurance, seems like it's a Waterfall model. Right. But that being said, we continuous, make sure that we are co continuously involved with the client. So each of these processes are running in parallel, in parallel, at, parallel at a time. And uh, we are all also making sure that we are taking clients feedback continuously, right. So we keep on enhancing these things. Uh, one of the things that Harshad mentioned, right, there, at, there are certain cases where we cannot take in changes. But there are a lot of times where we do take these changes in because at the end of the day, what we want to do is that the client, if the client has come to us, he is getting what he wants. Right. Right. At the end of the day, he should be happy. So to make sure that happens, we sometimes, we or most of the times, we will take in these changes at a later stage as well. Right. To make sure that, you know, what the client expects from their website, the website communicates that. Right. So right, but not to say, sorry, this was because people are joining us and not to say that, you know, uh, it should disrupt the process. Right. Uh, for changes that do come in, they, they are acknowledged, they are taken into account and they are taken in at a later stage. So right. that the flow that is discussed, that the flow that has been mapped out is not disrupted and overall timeline is not affected. Right, of right. course, if it's a larger change that that is impacting a bunch of other flows going forward, right. then that is something that we need to stop, take a look back and then sort of implement it at that stage and move forward and sure. see yeah. the kind of risk analysis that yeah. it has. Yeah. Uh, but what I, I hear what you're saying that uh, the, and, 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 I, and I like that, and that's what I like about what we do that uh, once you're in the design process, once you've got a few designs sort of mapped out those go into development yeah. parallelly so that you're not wasting time on the entire design to get right. done right. so you when you've got an entire flow already designed and mapped out and ready right. those go into development yeah. and then sort of you're parallelly designing other process and moving yeah. them into development and parallelly we also start quality assurance so we do not want any prior process to become roadblock for the next team got who it. is going to be right. working on it and this is what allows us to constantly keep right. iterating right. and keep building right. as well right right uh, right yeah got it so um who d who does a project manager report to at Shebang? What if Jatin, you can just talk us through a little bit about the composition of the team right. uh, and what is the structure of the team and who does a project manager report into? Right. So uh, in the digital transformation team, so I head the department and uh, under me there are two senior managers, right? And then each and every, both of these senior managers have project. These managers. are lead project ma So these are these are. Uh, Lead project lead managers project managing managers multiple projects. Who see their job is to you know uh, be like a hawk and keep an eye on anything and everything that is going on in the project, right? And make sure that they are the first point uh, of uh, escalation or first point where there, there, there is some issue comes in, right? So there is a there, so beneath them there are project managers who are directly interacting with the client continuously, and they tr uh, sort of uh, you know interact with the design team, with the development team. Right. So these teams, uh, so in the team below the project manager or by, uh, you know, uh, they, they con constantly work with, there's a design team, uh, there is a, a, a QA team, right, uh, and there is a development team. So these are the three teams uh, with which uh, uh, a project manager has to work with. Uh, also, what happens is because Shebang uh, is a one-stop solution uh, for all the clients. So sometimes what happens is, as Pratik mentioned earlier, that probably a project manager also needs to inter uh, interact with. There are different teams, like there is a photography team which is involved, right? There, so we also they probably would be interacting with the CRM executive if they have a CRM sort of a requirement or if they have a chatbot sort of a requirement or WhatsApp, right? They would also be interacting with the direct marketing team because some of the times what ha what happens is and because Shabang has sort of uh, made a statement wherein we say that when it comes to D two C website. Right, we are working with most of these brands, and we are delivering the promise. Right, and we've been doing amazing. We're working with brands like Nivea, with yeah. Godrej Professional, all the big brands which are out there. Right, and uh, we we were the ones who you know suggested them that this is the sort of framework that you should build. 
uh, the entire D2C architecture, not just the website, the entire architecture, and uh, not just we we uh, we just we uh, not just did, uh, sorry. That's fine. So uh, we not just uh, consulted them on that, but also uh, made sure that you know these things were executed. So uh, wherein uh, uh, whether it's uh, the website part of it, whether it's the CRM part of it, building these data lakes, having these marketing automations in place. So we covered the entire funnel for the client. Got it. Right. Interesting. Um, so you, you talk about how we, you, you spoke about how we interact with clients and uh, uh, really understand their business and, and provide, that, provide the right solution to them. Uh, how does a project manager act as a bridge between the internal teams uh, and, and, uh, and the client? Uh, and Bhumi, I want you to add in over here because as an account manager, you're, you're often doing that by bridging multiple, we have, we have a account management uh, podcast as well, which we we'll link at the bottom. But, and people can know, people who want to sort of explore the account management side can watch, can watch that podcast as well. But Bhumi, I want you to add in over here as well, how does a project manager, because Somewhere, I know there's a fine line between account management and project management and account managers also wearing multiple hats at a time. And so is a project manager like yeah. Pratik said. But how does, how does a project manager bridge, bridge the gap between a client and the internal teams? I think what is really important and actually helps us as well because once the project's developed, it comes to us. Uh, it's the understanding that the project manager has of both uh, your internal strengths and weaknesses and also understanding how the client processes. Every business model has their sets of ideologies, have their missions, they have visions. Understanding that that is also married and that's also uh, taken very rightly by our internal team. Our internal team is very well aware of their objectives. Uh, and when a project manager understands that, when you get that nerve right, it's very easy for the uh, team working while building uh, the website but also when it comes to us for, uh, later for retainer and maintenance purposes because then we are uh, so Pratik usually gives us a lowdown on what work has been done what was their idea behind building a certain feature or why a client has expected a certain kind of uh, maybe uh, plug you know tools and that's when that's how we that's our first introduction to the client and it, it's it's a blueprint again for us to start understanding what the client requires how should we be maintaining a, a relation with the client what what are the do's and don'ts when it comes to a certain uh, brand and i think that's something that a project manager uh, really really helps a, a, an account manager at because they have a great understanding of uh, what the client wants and especially because they've worked for the for the initial two three months so they've they've had multiple uh, situations and stages where they've understood and gone through uh, the growth so it gets easier for us it's like passing on the baton to us uh, which where we already have that uh, we're, we are uh, that little bit of buffer when we know what has gone down and what we should be now looking into so to bridge the gap, uh, also to bridge the gap uh, between the different teams, right? So I know whether it's a project manager or account manager, they are the first point of contact to the client, right? One of the things that they also do is whenever they're interacting with team, so they get the brief like this is the requirement or this is a change request, right? And then they interact with the team, get the opinion of the team, and then go back to the client saying that, you know, this is something that can be done and this is something that cannot be done, right? But that being said, uh, they, one of the things that they also have to do is continuously follow up with the internal teams as well, right? right? Because these teams would be working on many different projects, right. right? So they continuously follow up and make sure that, you know, they are responding back to the client in time. And that is something that our uh, project managers and account managers are very good at, right? right. Uh, one of the other thing is uh, our internal teams are also, you know, very efficient. So there are times when these people, whether it's a designer, whether it's a CRM team, whether it's a developer, they also have to jump in onto the calls, right? So these project managers will bring in these people and they are able to, you know, directly interact with the client because that is, I think that's where Shabang gets differentiated as well, wherein we just do not rely on key, uh, there is a project there manager, is a person he's going to gonna communicate everything, right? Yeah. But these people, when they come on the calls, these are the subject matter experts. So when they communicate to the client, the client also gets, uh, you know, gets that assurance 
and uh, comfort that okay theek hai yeah that i i've uh, of late seen that uh, i've seen that shift you know and that's something that we've been following uh, rigorously since the beginning since the inception of shebang of having the entire team involved in in this process but of late i've seen that i've seen that e- working even better where when I ha- when the entire team is sort of interacting with the client is a part of the conversation um especially on one of the international projects that we're working on right now on, yeah. on a on a chocolate brand that we're working on right now where i'm seeing that the design team is also communicating with the client right. uh, and i see this i see this on retain also i see this on dominos where yeah. i see mother also interacting yeah. with the client yeah. uh i see that the client is also uh it, it builds a better relationship between right. them and 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 like you rightly said right when this relationship is built over a time between between these two teams the client sort of builds that sort of comfort of Correct. working with shebang for a longer period of time and i think that's that's been, that's been beautifully done and that really sort of allows that what you spoke about taking the project from a one time project into a retainer project so i think bridging having having that uh, synergy between the client and the entire team and not only the project manager is is key to having a long term relationship with a with a particular right. client um we've been uh, adding these new tools as well right so we have bring in trello we have been bringing in uh, uh, zoho project so initially when when uh, harshad was mentioning that we also follow the agile methodology so when we bring in these tools and we are working on these tools then it also enables the team to directly interact with the client without going on you know without scheduling a particular call for each and every Correct. minor discussion yeah. right so they can directly interact using these tools and and we are also able to get prompt responses from the client uh, through the through those processes got it speaking of tools uh what are some of and this is for someone who is either looking to join or who's just joined the project management team what are some of the tools you would tools or softwares and pratik please feel free to add in over here sure. what are some of the tools and softwares you would expect someone or want someone to be equipped with to know while joining this team or wanting to join this team sure so i mean it's there's there's a variety of them right so jatin just up, touched upon trello and zoho projects now those are project management tools right. wherein you have the entire project defined on it the different stages and the different internal teams as well working on it they can communicate there so can your client so those are two examples of project management tools which definitely we do make use of and we would like a new project manager to know as well um some of the other tools are it can be any gantt chart tool as well so for example team gantt is one that we use pretty often uh but gantt charts are pretty standard so knowing a gantt chart is quite important and knowing how to use those tools is important to um in terms of design maybe there are tools like zeppelin which designers use to hand off uh things to developers but it's also important for a project manager to understand that the files are in place the designs are in place so that there's no gap in communication there and even something like envision is useful for us because that's where we build out prototypes and that's where we really present our designs right so sometimes the project manager is presenting a design and you need to know your way around the prototype as well show the different sections so show the different designs too so broadly these are some of the tools which i feel are essential uh that we use regularly got it and uh i'd also like to i'd like to add to this is also the google, uh, knowing google analytics again yeah, you know right. we yeah. we uh, spoke about google analytics in one of the account management and and okay. website maintenance yeah. uh, podcast, podcast as well uh but again i'd like to bring it up over here is because when you're sort of redoing uh when you're revamping someone's website you'd like to know how how the it consumer journey was over really there okay. you'd like to know what pages were working yeah. there you'd like to know what the drop offs and the bounce rates are are over there right. uh so google analytics heat maps yeah. all of these sort of play an important role of understanding on on while doing the project management at the strategy stage right. as well so then i think broadly speaking we can bucket these tools like you know you have your you have a primary bucket which is uh say google analytics yes definitely but you also need something where you can manage your team or manage the entire work so it could be either trello or it could be something as simple as google sheets because both of them are free to use software you can uh, maintain a personal set of things that you need to get done and you can also plan out you can also share it so that your team knows what they have to do so you can plan your project management whether it's a gantt chart or just a bucket, a task list or a thing a list of modules that need to be built developed designed 
on either of these platforms, Trello, uh, Google Sheets, and yes, Google Analytics is a different thing, but it's, it comes in the primary bucket. And then you have something like a secondary set of tools where that Pratik mentioned that, okay, you just need to know that there are these tools like uh, Envision, Zeppelin, Sketch, or Figma, where uh, you may not work or you, you're not the primary person to work on these tools, but you need to know them a little bit because your team does. Like a designer will use Sketch or Photoshop or Figma to make their designs and uh, then share it to the client using Envision or Zeppelin. Uh, a, a developer might use a certain set of other tools like maybe something like Slack or Git to do their own work. So you just need to be aware of these tertiary tools, but they don't uh, uh, revolve around you or you don't need to have hands-on experience. And then uh, at least if you know these uh, one tool in these categories or these buckets, then you can uh, join a company or an organization at least have, uh, you know, get started and slowly pick up on the tools that uh, the company uses or that are best suited for that company's environment. Like, uh, for example, I remember a colleague of mine who said that, you know, I've been working with uh, this application called Todoist. Uh, it works for me, even though the company doesn't use it uh, or Shabang doesn't use it, I can still make it work for the company. I can still make it make my work there hmm. and ensure that my team is also aware of what I am doing. So then that, that becomes like your on the job training or on the job learning which kind of says that, okay, these are the tools that work for me. It may not be what the company is using, but it's something that just works and you're able to have a clear line of communication. Got it. And would you, would you say, uh, would you uh, think it's necessary for a project manager to uh, know how to code or just have a understanding of technology and understanding of code is that sufficient or is that not necessary at all essentially what we want is we want the project manager to be tech savvy that's it right so there are right. a lot of different tools which are available and and it could also happen that a client has a certain mandate in place that you have to use this particular tool right. so if you understand basics of one tool you know you would be able to migrate to any other tool because every because as uh, initially Pratik you know, directed us through the flow, that this is the flow in which we work, right? It's just these flow that you're trying to replicate on a tool and better manage your, all of these activities. So if you're, if you're a tech savvy person, you, you can switch to any tool, right? And that is also something that we expect from these uh, project managers to have that sort of an analytical ability as well, that whenever, uh, you know, you are asked that this is a tool that you have to adapt, right? They go over there, they watch a couple of tutorials and they master it. Right, right. So this is also uh, expectations that we have uh, with all the project managers who are joining in. So someone who can adapt to tools and also be different CMSs or backend softwares, right? Uh, who just has an inclination to sort yeah. of so, be so, able to. So if I had to like again bucket them, I would say that someone who's following up these blogs like TechCrunch or Mashable, uh, they just know what's happening in the ecosystem. They know that okay, there might be a tool to do an X function or there might be something else to. Uh, uh, say why requirement so you just need to have a know how that okay there are these tools available or I can find a tool to do some, something uh, no one knows all the tools in this and yeah. no, no one uh, very few know certain tools in depth in and out so I would just say that someone who has an inclination that okay I want to know what is what is happening in this ecosystem hmm. uh, other and what is possible uh, like now, uh, I think in the past two, three years since uh, the pandemic has started and even slightly before that, uh, low code, no code tools yeah. and platforms have, are rising. So if a project manager is even aware of that or he says that, okay, I can get this done using certain tools like this, then that's a bonus. That's a huge, that's a, va that's a huge value add to the company. Itself. That's a huge value add to the company. And I'm like, okay, here's someone who can, I can, who can you know, quickly come in shebang and pick things up. Yeah. Because he's in that system, he knows how to think like um, from a functional perspective what uh, a developer or a project manager would need to manage a tech project. And also from a client perspective saying that, okay, this can be done. I can at least assure my client that, okay, your requirement is safe. It can be done. Let me just get back to you with, you know, the best way to do it. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. No, that, that's a, the, this, uh, the low code, no code point that you made is absolutely important. I think that's sort of also going to become the future of how uh, sort of talent is going to be looked right. at, right? Today, if I'm a designer, I know how to design. And if I know how to use a web flow, I can technically uh, just design and I can code that entire website. I become so much more as a value add to the company right. because I can now design the landing page and code a landing page without actually having five other people involved within within yeah. the system. Or if I know how to build, let's say, a, uh, a basic application using a no-code tool, like uh, um, using a no-code tool, I don't necessarily need to pull everyone. I can build something using Google Sheets and actually just get get the basic logic onto an app. Right, exactly. Like uh, the other day, I was reading an article where people were using uh, air, not Airtable, Notion hmm. to actually create Correct. a website. A CMS, a Notion built, Notion. Uh, CMS built on Notion. Yeah. yeah. And they were saying that, okay, I just need to publish a page on yeah. Notion and it I can have it uh, made available on a custom domain, say harshad.com. Right. So uh, then you don't, a project manager doesn't even need to know anything about development or code because he's able to think in that sense. He's able to think functionally and logically saying that, okay, I can build this or I can uh, easily deliver or I can, I, I understand the client's requirement. Got it. So, so apart from being a tech kida, uh, <laughs> What us? Because that's what I like to call. I like to call myself being a tech kid. Uh, I like sort of playing around with different tools and softwares. Uh, but apart from being one of those, uh, uh, what are some of the qualities that you guys look for in a project manager at Shebang? Right. So uh, uh, one of the thing that uh, so as you mentioned that being a tech kid, right? So uh, and to add on to what Harshad was saying previously, uh, I believe that you know where no code and low code comes in is uh, you can give a very quick proof of concept to the client, right? Obviously, the sort of application and sort of projects that we are doing, uh, we would need, uh, uh, you know, experts handling the development part and the design part, right? But uh, most of the times, one of the things that happens is that client comes, key, whether this is something which is going to work for me or not, wherein a project manager can use this tool give and very quickly turn around a POC and give that POC to the client, right? Uh, so uh, now moving on to uh, what uh, we expect from a project manager is a being a tech leader. Uh, or I like a civilized <laughs> version of it is also technologist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, B is uh, as I mentioned, see most of anyone and everyone and all the resumes that you're gonna get. Uh, the first line mentioned over there is uh, I have good analytical skills. Right. So we actually want those and good analytical <laughs> skills in the project manager because there's a lot of research and analysis is something uh, that a project manager has to do. Because uh, if we, so when we were describing the entire process, the project manager is actually the backbone of it. Yeah. You know, the entire process or the entire delivery of an application. So uh, probably, you know, they are connecting with the brains wherein the developers are there. Right. They're collect connecting with the heart wherein uh, there are designers. Right. So they are connecting with different parts of the body, hmm. right? Correct. And uh, they make sure that everything happens. And if the project manager is not there, then everything crashes down. You paralyze. Right. Right. So, so the project manager is basically the veins of the entire yeah. project and sort of connecting the with various yeah. organs that are there. Right. So you're looking for someone who's great at communication and can work with uh, various teams and are, is able to handle and manage various teams. You're looking at someone who's definitely a technologist or a tech kida. Uh, is there anything else in specific that... One that, of the most crucial skill for me is if the person is able to build relationships very fast. Very good point. Very yeah. Fast. With the client, because yeah. when it comes to a new project, then you all, you have a very short window in which you have to build these relationships. Yeah. Yeah. See, when it's a retainer, then you get a lot of time. Through and months, through years, actually, you might correct, wish them yeah. a bird, birthday yeah. and everything. Yeah. But in the project manager, you have a... As a project manager, you have like three months time, five months time, right? So it's very crucial to be very observant and aware in terms of what the client is speaking. When you're super aware about, uh, you know, whenever you're going on a call and if a client mentions that I was, I, was, I was sick today, right? And when you're going on the next call, you ask them a very simple question, how are you doing, yeah. right? right? So that sort of, so these, these are small, small things that, you know, a person, if a person is observant and aware, they would be able to pick these things. So essentially part of, you know, the larger uh, 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 group, which is relationship management, 
Hmm. Uh, that is something that uh, is the most crucial bit because that is also going to that is all, that also needs to happen internally very good point i was just going to add to that that it right. needs to happen internally, internally. as well yeah. right yeah. because there are there are design teams there are development teams and uh, you know sometimes a developer different different developers are going to come into the picture right even our design team is quite broad right so you might be working with different designers right and uh, every every now and then what happens is not not every day everyone is having a good day yeah right Correct. so yeah. how do you handle those 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 specific days and make sure that you know everybody Being is more happy more empathetic uh, towards right? the situation so yeah, yeah. so that's what uh, uh, is very essential uh, when i'm looking for someone just to, just to add to what you're saying i mean at the end of the day whether it's our internal teams or whether it's clients where we're all people at the end of the day right so yeah. someone could be having a bad day someone could be unwell and that one line could make a big difference just to check in on someone client or internal team and i think one other point which i think is really key and essential for a project manager is uh, being a good problem solver good one yeah so i mean you can have a design related problem you can have a content related problem a development related problem and we've been saying that you need to understand all these things right you may not be the best at writing creative content but you may never know when your input can come handy yeah. or where your input can be needed anywhere and that's how you also learn things because tomorrow there may be a problem which i may not have ever faced right. at all uh-huh. till date but that's when you'll end up learning that okay this is something new i can go and talk to my teams i can figure out how to tackle it and how to solve it and address it and that's how you grow really i guess right yeah so i would i would add saying that first a project manager needs to unlearn a few things and also learn a few things because sure. uh unlearning is something that's uh, you know that's personal like you know you have to bite the bullet and say that okay i need to forget what i know about this i need to unlearn it and pick up something new so that open mindset of unlearning something and learning something is more needed more because when you are interacting with a lot of people and you're trying to problem solve things that's when you need to understand that okay i need to maybe unlearn my powerpoint presentation skills and listen to my designer and learn from them saying that you do it this way hmm or i need to unlearn my uh thinking about a particular module and learn from my developer who says that okay this is a better way to do it because it will give you better performance so that unlearning and learning that is something that kind of helps you with that problem solving attitude and that mindset that okay i can do this or i can deliver on things and when you have gathered that broad knowledge set so one of the other crucial skill is being spontaneous right so at many a times when you are on a client call this is something which is very much important because client is going to ask you something right and you need, you might you may or may not have time to go back to your team and you know understand what it is and then come back because the client over there on the call expects an answer right right at that moment right so that is where being spontaneous is something which is which becomes very crucial and how you can be spontaneous is only by if you have done this learning unlearning and relearning sort of an exercise because then you have a whole a huge uh, yeah. knowledge bundle yeah that you yeah. can access yeah rightly put rightly put um so is it is it that when some when someone who's joining this team uh do you expect them to have some sort of experience in project management uh there are, we've got we've got various levels of project management we've got we've got guys who are pratik you have guys who are in your team there's someone who comes then at uh your level and then there's jatin who there's someone at you are yeah. is the expectation that someone should have already built out a, or should have had experience building out or is that something that they can gain here and at what point do you expect what them to know what right so uh, having a certain experience always helps right but as we mentioned that we are looking out for certain skills in place so we have had certain people who have joined in who prob- who may or may not have any work experience or probably had working experience in a different vertical itself in a different uh, you know sort of role in which they were working but they have come into the team uh, you know there are there is a certain hierarchy and people have taught them and they have picked up things very fast right and they are they are working um, so i'm i'm very much satisfied with everyone who has come in right and uh, why is that because pratik is able to make sure that he has certain experience in project management and he's able to guide them in a way wherein these people are learning very fast right mm-hmm. so even if someone is coming in without a project management experience 
but they have all these necessary skills with about which we have already spoken then uh, you know we would be able to train them and develop them so they also get an opportunity to grow in the company right. and as they grow they can move up to the ladder so there is a web strategist there is a project manager there is a senior project manager right there is a head of the department so there is there is an entire hierarchy uh, for for them to climb got it got it I, i'd also add here so someone who is looking to explore uh, sort of various cms and want to in easiest one to get going and get started is actually shopify because it's free you can actually set up a free store or a trial store for 15 days 20 days or till the time you put in your credit card or you're going live you can can actually set up an e-commerce store where you get a full fledged back end where you can upload content so if you want to try something out and sort of build practice i think shopify is the best place to get going because then you also have the plugins to install play around and see actually what you can do with a website so can we get shopify sponsorship can we get shopify <laughs> sponsorship i hope we can thank you for it uh, but bumi coming coming to you uh, what is the difference between an account manager and now you've heard these guys talk about a lot about project management according to you what is the difference between an account manager and a project manager uh i think i'll just reiterate what i said earlier as well when a, when a new project comes it could be revamping a website or it could be building a new website mm. that's when prateek comes into picture jatin harshad come into picture where they kind of start off the whole process uh they uh that they get the ball rolling uh they build this whole facade for us uh after that what comes to us is maintaining it ensuring the quality of work they've assured and given it's maintained at that level at no point there are any technical errors very basic things like technical errors page speed uh, issues or uh, increased bounce rate or any form of uh, website issues also ensuring that our seo and content on the website is updated cuz uh, probably they've worked on that website Six months ago, but the trends changing every six months. Google's changing their uh, uh, protocols. Al- exactly, every every six months. So to ensure that the kind of work they've assured, the kind of work they've uh, promised the client, we ensure that it's maintained uh, for the next years that the the client is with us. Uh, also, there are times where the client comes to us uh, for uh, an additional requirement, saying that, okay, I I like what you've built, but we want certain landing pages or we want certain micro sites, and that's a conversation I was having with Pratik today. So I went to him and understood how they do it, because uh, since it's the client with us for retainer, uh, there are times where we take up small projects, and that's when I uh, always always reach out to Pratik. or the web strategist reaches out to project manager manager and understands how we can take up those small projects while uh, the client is with us on retainer uh, so i think it's a very uh, it there is a thin thin line but it's it's something where we need to back up what a project manager does because if we do not it the whole thing falls apart mm-hmm. so i think what an account manager is, does is it ensures that the the uh, weight or the the kind of work the project manager has done so far to ensure that it's if not going up at least to ensure it's that level obviously the uh, goal always is to make it better but to ensure there's no form of uh, downfall or there's no issues post a project completed to add on to that uh, something which i have also noticed what an account manager does is because they are involved with the client for a longer duration these account so every account manager is also adding a lot of value for the client right wherein they would tell them that this is the direct marketing campaign that you should start doing that you should they understand their business model they understand what the website is doing if the website is a d2c website or any website which is generating sort of revenue the account manager is going to suggest that these are the strategies uh, that you know probably is going to help you build your business better or gain more revenue so these account managers keeps on adding all of these values right and looping in all these different teams uh, so as to build on you know on top of that correct uh-huh. so the account manager is essentially building the project manager has built the base for correct. for right. that right. digital transformation the account manager is Need now taking uh, now taking that ecosystem and and just scaling it scaling yeah. it further yeah. by getting uh, getting either getting the media team in getting the email marketing team in or right. getting getting the various channels so account managers usually sort of building that relationship further what right. the yeah. project yeah. manager done and and scaling the project and 
That's building right. on top of the base that the project manager yeah, yeah. project manager the sets done. the cornerstone and the movie <laughs> builds a house on top of it Correct. okay yeah. so we've sort of come to a close almost a close of this uh, last question what are some of those basic things that you would want to tell a project manager if they wanting to apply or if they've just joined i i think pratik should take this question because he keeps telling uh, alankrit uh, uh, and everyone in the team yeah. that this is something that you should do so so i would say just you know be curious and be inquisitive uh, there's everything there's something or the other that's coming out new uh, every now and then i know so we touched upon webflow earlier so like webflow you can build out a website by yourself that's something new which you never thought you could have probably done before uh, be curious stay on your toes at all times uh, be willing to learn and have an open mind i think those are the things that are there and of course we said be a technologist or a tech kida so i have a sense of what's going on in this ecosystem and in this world and uh, yeah just be a good communicator with all these things you should be good to go i guess then. yeah yeah like you know go beyond your phones go beyond yeah. your laptops computers and all and just see what's what's possible um uh be like you know okay how can two things communicate how can i um or you know if you at the back of your mind if you have something that okay i have this small thought or a, of a pet project uh you may not want to build it out but you may want to plan it out so you know that mindset of planning things or how things work that helps more or that is something that at least i look at saying that okay how is this person able to think and build on things or from what he knows about the ecosystem because once that is there there's again you can come in and you can learn and learn things if you have those right attitude and uh the know how of the space there is something that i always tell every project manager who comes in uh see when we were teenagers we used to think that uh, we are the smartest person in the planet right 2 3 years down the line you realize how stupid you were at that time <laughs> right? so at the age of 21 and 22 that is the first time that you grow up and you realize that and it took you 22 years to be able to realize that i was stupid and that's where your growth starts right so what i tell them is that if you know whenever you grow so if there is a year that you have taken and you realize that previous year i was stupid then there is certain growth that has happened now if that has happened for a in a year's time then your that is your rate right if you if that can start to happen in 6 months time if that can ha- start to happen in 3 months time or if it's happening weekly that every week you think that okay a uh, prior week person was hmm. stupid so that tells you that this is that you are actually growing right so uh, that what that does is that you know there there need not be a person on top of you who is keep who who keeps on pushing you that you have to do this you have to do that that's where you also start to develop that fire in the belly and you grow by yourself and that is the sort of person once this has been told to them <laughs> and they adapt to it that is the sort of person uh, which uh, you know uh, i would prefer in my team yeah i'd always advise do, like don't be stupid but keep staying hungry <laughs> yeah, keep wanting to learn hungry. that's that's yeah. what i would say so you, we spoke about the process that usually is followed uh, by a project manager um, are there any processes and checklists that are followed uh, during the course course of the project that someone can someone who's new joining into the team can refer to and and also ensure that you know the the practices that are followed across the team is something that they're able to adapt to sure yeah, there there are a few in that matter so um uh, one of the first checklists that you really need to keep in mind is when you're planning out the project and that's sort of the basic requirement checklist if i were to call it that wherein you're asking the client for things like their brand guidelines so your fonts brand colors uh product images raw content about the brand which you know will go onto the website or product content right so it can be both from a design and a content perspective and in case there's anything development related wherein you need the client's help to begin with or you need certain information for example you need to discuss with them that okay this is the server requirement so that can also be part of that checklist and these are the things if you plan on an initial stage you will have these things sorted out and then it sort of won't come back to bite you because you have all these things and they're also essentials to then take the project forward yeah. so that's one of the checklists that we have at the start so we'll put a link we've put a link to that at the bottom uh, you can click on that checklist and uh, uh, you can click on that link and then sort of know the kind of checklist that's there but sorry go ahead yeah sure and uh, 
then later on in the project when you're you know sort of done with your designs everything's ready and approved and uh, you're done with your development as well and you're looking to go live so that's when we have a go live checklist wherein there are things like shutterstock images that need to be purchased uh, the server setup needs to be done all the testing needs to be done um, your seo meta tags and titles need to be in place on the website so those are the kind of things that are covered in the go live checklist and you have to make sure that you take all of those before going live so that's like a sanity check that we do and we make sure all those items and those tasks are covered as well so that makes sure that you're taking the website live and sort of setting it up for success and these check checklists are more like uh, you know they're like a thumb rule that okay you have to follow something like this but you need you, you need to change it to uh, depending on what project you're working yeah. on because uh, a so certain projects are like just simple straightforward ones where uh, say if a lead comes in you just share that lead with the client over a email but uh, there are some clients or some requirements where they say that okay you know if a lead comes in or if a sale happens then you need to pass that data to our internal uh, CRM systems or ERP systems or any other internal tool or system that the client is using to uh, you know do their daily work and uh, run the company so uh, again these checklists are there they're just a guiding rule but basis that you need to build on them for each and every project so your uh, no two checklists will be the same for uh, any project got it so it's absolutely important to go through those checklists and and build on it again like, build like on we it, said yeah. uh, based on your client at least the, the checklist will start getting you thinking in the right direction and then based on the kind of project that you will always add on add on to that checklist yeah okay thank you for tuning in for this podcast i hope you found this helpful and insightful i look forward to you joining us and i look forward to working with you Thank you.